In 1981, Alton Towers was on its way to becoming a fully-fledged theme park. After the success of the corkscrew the year before, they would turn to a classic to keep the momentum going. A ride that would last 34 years and eventually be themed to taking a bath, complete with terrifying rubber ducky. The Alton Towers Log Flume. When Alton Towers opened the corkscrew in 1980, it would not just change the future of the park forever, but also push the whole UK theme park industry forward. This edition was incredibly popular, and John Broom was well on his way to creating the premier UK amusement park. Some of Broom's ideas were imported from Disneyland, but he made sure that Alton Towers was not a copybook transplant of that American fantasy. Disney is a particularly American phenomenon. It is hard sell. There's a certain artificial element in it. It is beautifully run concept. Capital, absolutely no object. The English market demands a little bit more of a solid approach, and this is what we're doing here. We are putting these attractions within a real country garden setting. In just one year, the attendance of the park would double, from 500,000 in 1979 to over 1 million. To capitalize on this increase, the park decided they would add more for the 1981 season. Among the new additions would be Dinosaur Land, Doom and Sons, a small walkthrough ghost house, Around the World in 80 Days, the park's first dark ride, as well as the largest new addition, the Log Flume. Log Flume rides have become increasingly popular overseas, with the first modern version created by Arrow Dynamics at Six Flags Over Texas in 1963. Log flumes will be cutting edge amusement park technology and will become even more popular after one's inclusion at the 1964 World's Fair. Arrow would dominate the log flume industry for the next two decades, where they would continue to become staples of parks throughout the US in the 60s and 70s. The ride would be seen as the first great thrill ride since roller coasters. The UK would get its first log flume very early on in their rise to popularity, just four years after the first debuted in 1967 at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. The first log flume ride in Europe would be the current longest in the world at 2,349 feet. This new addition would cost £180,000 and draw not just large ridership, but also plenty of people stopping to watch it fly down the drop. After the success of log flumes around the world, other manufacturers would start to make versions of their own, one being Mack Rides of Germany, and with it, the one that would come to Alton Towers. Oh. <laughs> well, there's an experience. Opening in 1981 in the Ingestra Center area of the park, it was known as the Wild Water Flume Ride and it kickstart the development on the other side of the park further away from the towers themselves. As the second major ride built at the park, constructed over the 1980 to 1981 season, just like the corkscrew, it was not really themed, though it was loosely based of transportation logs traveling down a river. This log flume would now be the longest in the world, at 2,900 feet, creating a huge construction effort for the park. A five and a half acre area was transformed into a purpose-built reservoir to provide the ride's water supply. With a custom-built station featuring a large turntable structure to provide efficient loading, the station would feature an open roof, white geometric structure over it, along with a cattle pen queue to reach it. This would later be changed to a large path that would head around the lake to reach the station, making it a much nicer entrance, though you would have to walk the whole way if the line was empty. No worries though, as there was plenty of signs asking water-themed questions to keep you entertained. The ride takes you past the nearby entrance and original queue line, which once had plastic screens to stop riders in the boat leaning out and splashing people waiting in line, before reaching the first lift. Many people would fear what was on the other side of the lift, as you could not see the drop. But no, this was a tease, and the first drop was tiny, taking riders down a path high up above the ground. 
The track would now gradually slope down to the next lift hill to keep the log's momentum going as you travelled through the woods. A long, long way. This ride took riders far from the busy paths of the park, and it really would feel like you were travelling through dense woods in the middle of nowhere. At no point on your trip though is anything themed. It is just you, your log, and the woods. The ride travels an elongated figure eight, heading through a tunnel under the second lift hill, which then continues along its peaceful path through the woods. After the second lift hill, the ride features a drop in the dark and head through the dark for quite some time before the final lift hill. This lift once featured the first on-ride photos in the park, where the log would stop and you would be handed a ticket to collect your picture at the end, and even in the earlier days, have it mailed to you. The final drop takes you straight back from your isolation in the woods into the midst of the park, over the purpose-built lake and down the 85-foot drop before returning to the station. As a matter of fact, since the since Alton Park Towers was uh, since Alton Towers was uh, created in 1980, it's become the biggest leisure park in the whole of Europe. Some 50 million pounds have been spent on it, and last year, three million pounds were the profits. So other people now want to get a look in and get their share too. Just like the corkscrew the year before, the ride was an instant success and once again helped to transition the park into a fully-fledged theme park. Many smaller changes would happen over the years. Originally, the Alton Towers Railway would pass by the ride, crossing over the queue of the log flume, forcing the railway to be cut back the following year. The name was first changed to just the log flume, and the area around it transformed to create the largest themed area in the park in 1984, Aqualand which reached from a paddling pool next to Fantasy World, now X Sector, all the way to the entrance of the Grand Canyon Rapids, which were added in 1986. As for the log flume, in 1984, it would see its first, somewhat, major addition. Dinosaurs. Some of the exact same dinosaurs that were previously located on the site of the Black Hole. A selection of dinosaurs would be located in the woodland section of the ride. After exiting the first tunnel, they would be placed around the track, and inside the second tunnel, rather than just a long, pitch black section, some of the smaller models gathered around a pool in a lightly lit scene. 1992 saw the log flume find its home in the third named land of the area, with Merry England. Aqualand had been split up into new, highly themed areas of Gloomy Wood and Catania Canyon. While Merry England would begin as a subsection for Tower Street at first, it would later be recognised as its own land. Another change in 1994 saw the ride lose its white geometric station and receive a more rustic look to keep it more in theme with the logging experience. Two years after this, the dinosaurs would go, uh, extinct, and the ride returned to a nice peaceful log ride through the woods. The tunnel would just return to being pitch black, with a sage that used to house the dinosaurs just in the dark. Very little would change for the next eight years, and the ride began to look a little bit too authentic with its rustic look. Closing at the end of the 2003 season, it would take on a new theme, the Flume Unplugged, sponsored by Imperial Leather. No more logs would ride the waterways, in their place would be brightly coloured bathtubs. What's more fitting for a sponsorship by a soap manufacturer? This time, the log flume was bringing bath time with attitude, complete with showers and slightly terrifying rubber ducks. Yeah. While the ride itself would remain the same, the revamp of the station roof would be expanded and touched up with a stylish new look, complete with bath tap on top. After the final drop, two power showers would be added, which were very, very annoying. Nothing like a spray from a shower on a cold British day to really make a ride feel worth it. Of course, they had a huge sponsor logo on and had to be shown off to the watching crowd somehow. The ride also had a new upbeat happy soundtrack added. The new vehicles were bright red, old fashioned cartoon-like bathtubs, complete with taps on the back and of course the ride sponsor. Rather than taking your bath alone at Alton Towers, you would take your bath tightly squished with up to four other people. This is one bath I would suggest you take with your clothes on, for everybody's sake. Once again here, you would take off on the same path on your washing adventure, 
with this newly themed sponsor heavy attraction, what would await on your bathtub ride through the park? Perhaps maybe a section where you got scrubbed, or foam, or well, cleaned? Well, no, nothing would happen nothing at all. The only difference to your trip through the woods was now that you would be floating through them with four of your best pals, or four strangers in a bright red bathtub. Heading through the first tunnel again, nothing happens, except darkness. After seeing the lack of theming, you continue through the woods on a really pleasant float as usual taken in the scenery, waiting to reach that final drop. The drop in the dark remains the same, until the real theming is revealed. This is now in fact a horror ride. A giant toy duck lunges towards your bathtub, quacking at the top of his lungs. I like to think this is the inspiration for all the horror based attractions that would come to the park following this refurbishment. They said 13 would need a waiver, but just look at the flume for the real scares. This duck is in fact the same dancing duck from the Imperial Leather adverts, and was the only addition to the back section of the ride before heading down the final drop. Bath time with an attitude? I think not. The new re-theme was not great. Covered in sponsors, it didn't change the ride experience and took away from a relaxing ride with a fun drop. Seeing weird bathtubs floating through the woods just does not give the same feel. Without spending huge amounts of money on it, the ride was so long and out in the open, it would have been hard to do anything with. On the plus side, at least it was better than Ribena Rumbo Rapids. Just no more terrifying ducks, please. Escape to Mutiny Bay, the new pirate land. Tolton Towers Resort. In 2008, the surrounding area was re-themed to Mutiny Bay, but the bathtub theme remained, floating through the pirate theme land. This classic ride stays were numbered. After 34 years of splashing and later quacking, the flume's final season was 2015, closing on October 10th. In early 2016, it was announced the ride would not return. It stood standing but not operating throughout the season, before being demolished later the same year. Something new was coming to the area. Large amounts of the Flume's items were sold off, including most of the boats. While the Flume may have not been the most thrilling ride, it was the first time Alton Towers had built a custom, large-scale attraction for the park, with Corkscrew just being an off-the-shelf coaster. In 1981, Alton had built the longest log flume in the world. There was something special about sitting in a full log, scraping along the bottom, through the woods, feeling like you really had left the park behind. Log flumes are a dying breed of attraction that I personally have loved since I was a kid. Many of the UK's log flumes defined my childhood and pushed me towards my love of theme parks today. From the sadly abandoned Logger's Leap, my first ever thrill ride, Nightmare Niagara, the once tallest in the UK, or the original classic at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, that was replaced by one of the worst roller coasters in the world ever. And yes, even to that terrifying quacking duck. Log flumes were a type of ride the whole family could enjoy, no matter the size, age, or the scale of the ride. An attraction that truly pushed each and every one of the UK theme parks forward and left riders exiting with a huge smile on their face. One that is sadly becoming rarer and rarer as the years go on. As for what would replace the flume, well, that is for the next expedition, Alton Towers. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Alton Towers. 
If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. Are you a fan of log flumes? Let me know in the comments below. If you would like to see more about the creation of log flumes, take a look at our video on Knott's Berry Farm's Timber Mountain Log Ride. A special thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel, and we will see you next time.